Hello, here is a microscopic section taken from a core biopsy in the breast. This patient had a mammographic abnormality and at this low power magnification, we can see that there is adipose tissue and the pink areas are fibrous tissue, part of the stroma of the breast. And at the same time, we can see some very large rounded structures. These are pre-existing ducts which are abnormal and are expanded by abnormal cells. And also, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see some irregular nests of cells within the fibrous stroma. So actually, the original ductal and lobular architecture of the breast is lost here. Just for comparison, here is a section taken from a normal breast and again you can see the fibroadiposstroma and here are the ductal and the lobular structures. So this architecture is not seen in the core biopsy. Here is a quick look at the high magnification view of a normal breast duct. So normally breast ducts and lobules are lined by two-layered or bilayered epithelium, the inner luminal cells and the outer layer of basal cells. If we see bilayered epithelium lining ducts and lobules, it is almost always indicative of benign breast tissue. Moving back to this core biopsy, we will first look at these large expanded ductal structures and then we're going to zoom in on these irregular nests of cells within the stroma. So let's have a closer look at these ductal structures. You can see that uh, this very large expanded duct is almost entirely filled with these cells. In some areas, there's luminal formation or lumen formation, and in other areas, it appears more solid. What is important is that it's very rounded, and also if we look carefully at the periphery, we can actually just make out these cells, which are smaller and blander than these cells, which are filling up the ductal structure. These compressed cells are actually residual benign basal cells and we can confirm this if we do specific basal cell markers such as P63 or high molecular weight cytokeratins or CK14 and these would light up in the normal basal cells. The presence of a residual layer of basal cells tells us that this was an original pre-existing duct and more importantly, that this neoplastic process is still an in situ process. In other words, it has not invaded through the ductal basement membrane. So here is what DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ looks like. There are several patterns for DCIS. We can have solid DCIS as you see here. And in this other area of DCIS, you can see more prominent uh, luminal structures, and this is called cribriform DCIS. Let's now focus on these areas where we can see a lot of irregular clusters of cells that seem to be directly sitting in the stroma. So here are some nests of cells, and we can see also tubule formation here and here and also here. This is invasive ductal carcinoma. I know this is invasive because of the very irregular architecture and because it doesn't appear to be within a pre-existing duct or lobular system. And it's also very infiltrative in the stroma. We can see that the stroma has this decimal plastic reaction. It's almost grayish and there's more stromal cells, these spindly cells. So the stroma is a little bit more cellular than usual and it is because it is reacting to the infiltrating nests of tumor cells. So this is how we differentiate invasive carcinoma from in situ carcinoma. In situ carcinoma has the low power architectural appearance of pre-existing ducts and lobules and also we can see a preserved basal cell layer and in contrast, invasive carcinoma is composed of very irregular nests and glandular structures that are directly sitting in the stroma and incites a desmoplastic stromal reaction.